Hello again. Um, I'm the gnome from Gnomespun. This is a video about low whorl spindles. These are low whorl spindles, and we're going to talk today about uh, two primary myths of low whorl spindles. So we'll start with this one. And the first myth. The first myth of low whorl spindles is that they're heavy. This spindle, as you can see, is very small. It's also very light. It's only 0.5 ounces, or a little bit less than that, actually. This is a Hatchtown Spinimal bottom whorl spindle. So this whorl sits down here while you're spinning, rather than up here, which you may or may not be used to. So the first thing, if you're going to use a bottom whorl spindle like this, is that you need to get fiber on the spindle so that you can continue spinning. To do that, you need to make a leader. In order to make a leader, you need fiber. And you take a little bit of your fiber and you draft it out like this. And as you draft, you twist with your fingers. And what you're doing as you twist with your fingers is exactly what you're doing with your spindle. It's just that your spindle spins a lot faster than your, than your fingers tend to. And so you can see as you're twisting, you're adding twists to the fiber, and you're making yarn exactly like your spindle does. Um, it's just that I am slower than my spindle, which is, of course, why I use a spindle. And I'm making yarn. And once it's long enough, and depending on exactly how ambitious you are, you can either make a leader that's about this long and tie it on directly, or you can actually make a yarn leader um, applied yarn leader and ply it back on itself. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to stop here and wind that off. Take up my spindle. I'm going to tie a simple half knot, also known as an overhand knot, on the bottom of the spindle. Um, really, any way you want to attach your, your yarn is fine, as long as it stays put where you put it. I use a half knot, also known as an overhand knot. This is one of the places where people have difficulties with low whorl spindles. A top whorl spindle, you'd go directly up to the top like this. A lower little spindle, you need to you need to spiral around the shaft like this. This gives the spindle significantly more stability when you go to spin it, and keeps it from flipping off the top up here, which is one of the problems that a lot of people have. In order to secure it at the top, you wind it around your finger like this. Put your finger on the top and slide it off and you've now just made a half hitch on the top of the spindle. And you're now ready to, to spin. So, in order to do this, I do a lot of my spindling while I'm walking around, and so to do that, I take off a chunk, leave that over there. Now I'm ready to walk around and spindle. So here I have my yarn. You can see, I spin it like that. And that's what happens if you spin it the wrong direction. If you spin it the wrong direction, you will unspin that yarn that you just carefully spun and made. But that's about it. That's all that happens. You know, people are often very worried about spinning the wrong direction. The answer is, there is no right direction. The right direction is the direction that you have been spinning. I tend to spin uh, clockwise because I do everything clockwise. So, once you start clockwise, you need to continue clockwise, and then when you ply it, you will spin your spindle the other direction. So, I use, here you go, you can see it spins. You can see that it's gyroscoping there at the bottom, but you'll also notice that it's not affecting my ability to draft or spin yarn at all, and I'm still able to spin yarn. Fine. You'll also notice um, that as this leader gets longer, 
as there gets to be more and more yarn here, that it starts to spin more evenly. So, the first myth of low whirl spindles, that they're always heavy. This one is clearly not heavy. So then, when you're done, you can, if you're more skilled than me, then you can butterfly this on your fingers, slide it off the top, wind it back on the bottom, and spin. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is spinning fine. And one of the other myths of bottom whorls is that you can't spin fine on a bottom whorl. Now, part of that is that people think the bottom whorls are heavy, and as I demonstrated, they're not. But this bottom whorl is uh, 1.5 ounces. That's three times as heavy as that spindle. Um, but you'll notice that what I'm spinning here is still pretty fine. Um, as you spin on a spindle, the yarn builds up in the cop, and if you're spinning a significant amount, say you want to spin enough yarn for socks, that's about somewhere between three and four ounces of, of fiber, which is a significant amount of weight, and so at, by the time you're done, you're actually spinning significantly more than the weight of the spindle. So this spindle, as I said, is one and a half ounces, which is significantly more than the last one. Um, you can see I've already twisted the leader up the, up the spindle, and just like the last time, around your finger, slide it off, you've got a half itch, and you can see I've already got a little bit spun out here. Um, bottom whorls tend to balance better with a slightly longer leader, as you can see. And you can see then, as when I want to spin more, I add on more fiber from my hand, draft out, and you can see that I have absolutely no problem spinning as fine as I want. You can see the part right up here now. I've only got a few fibers at any given time in the new yarn, and it's doing just fine as long as you have enough twist in the yarn to hold it together you're fine. And you can see that the heavier weight of this spindle makes it spin longer than the little tiny lightweight spindle. And so I can spin this guy and basically I can spin it as long as I have um, as of my arms because I have short little arms. Um, and then one, pop off the top, unwind down the spindle, wind onto my cup, undo my butterfly onto the spindle, wind back up the shaft, wrap around my finger, slide off, and I'm ready to spin again.